Welcome to a course in group theory. So in this quarter, we start studying abstract algebra, and for the whole quarter, we discuss just one huge topic, group theory. So um, in this first lecture, I want to talk about what a group actually is. And as you will see, all of you have a great idea what this theory is about. And the reason is very simple, because Group theory studies symmetry. So symmetry, symmetry patterns, um, and how to think about them is what we will discuss throughout this course. So um, in this somewhat philosophical introduction, I want to look at some examples of objects from our life which have symmetries and understand how to think about them mathematically, at least um, uh, to do a first attempt. So in the remaining sections of introduction, I will talk about uh, a formal definition of a group and we will discuss its properties, we will look at some examples, and I will end it with a little bit of history and, and a plan for the rest of the course. So let's start with, with symmetry. Okay, so what is a pretty typical example of an object with a symmetry? Let's start with a butterfly. So. I will attempt to draw some pictures in the course, and this will be always terrible. But uh, excuse me for that. So this is a butterfly. Let me even add some maybe pattern here. And uh, a butterfly clearly has a pattern of symmetry, and this is a symmetry with respect to an axis. So what it means? If you do the following transformation, you send every point to the mirror image point with respect to this line, your butterfly will go to itself, so you will see the same pattern. And uh, of course, that's not the only object uh, you know which has a symmetry. I can easily draw something else. For instance, here is a tree. So that's my attempt at least to draw a tree, which has the same symmetry pattern. Okay, so I don't want you to think that throughout this course we will just do geometry, though we will do a bit of it. So let me point out that the same symmetry is something you have already seen in calculus. So let me remind you, so this is kind of example number one, example number two, example number three is just a definition. So a function f from R to R is even if for every x in R f of x equals to f of minus x. And why it's the same kind of symmetry? There are two reasons. So one of them is just because if you draw a graph of this function, so you will probably see something symmetric, and that's why it's kind of the same story. Um, let's say something like this. But, but moreover, um, if you just think of it, you know, the symmetry sum operation where you take instead of x, you send every point x to point uh, with the same uh, y coordinate and point minus x, and, and this is uh, the symmetry of your function. So you can think of it as not a geometric uh, fact, but a symmetry of an object from calculus. By the way, um, that's the only time probably in this course we will kind of mention some calculus. So um, you can enjoy it for now. So uh, let's look at something with a richer pattern of symmetry. So much more uh, involved example is a triangle. So I take a regular triangle, and that's important, so it has all these angles being pi over 3. And then this triangle has, let me denote it by A, B, C. So it has a much richer symmetry. So you can look, it has a 3 axis of symmetry. Um, but also you can rotate it uh, by uh, 2 pi over 3 angle. And that's also a symmetry. So under the symmetry, this uh, vertices will kind of A go to B, B go to C, C goes to A. So, and also you can do maybe rotation by 4 pi over 3 uh, angle. 
Um, okay, what else? So let me do even more sophisticated patterns. So for instance, one can take this one. So this is just infinite lattice, which is the most uh, familiar to you, this integer lattice, which, which with integer coordinates of squares here, and it has lots of symmetry. So every line here is actually an axis of symmetry, but also every line in between two going through middles is also an axis of symmetry. And also there is this axis of symmetry. And moreover, you can do parallel transports. You can sort of move your your uh, whole picture by one of those let uh, vectors and you will see the same picture. So this is a very rich pattern of symmetry, um, which is infinite. And there are a lot of patterns of symmetry which are called wallpapers, which you can see in different palaces on the floors. You can see different mosaic patterns. And if there is some regularity there, you are probably dealing with some pattern of symmetry like that. Finally, let me do something even more uh, complicated. I can take, for instance, a circle. And circle has infinitely many axes of symmetry. And also you can rotate it by basically arbitrary angle. So uh, you can rotate it by anything or you can flip it with respect to any line and it will go to itself. So you see all these objects has different patterns of symmetry and group theory basically studies patterns of symmetry. So let me kind of say that, that approximately speaking, group is just the same as a pattern of symmetry. And um, of course, it's not clear what it means right now. But what is clear here is that um, if you just try to define mathematically something which kind of simultaneously covers all these examples, it will be not so easy. Because, okay, most of them are having something to do with geometry, but for instance, this one, not so much. And later on in the course, we will see lots and lots of symmetries which are not naturally appear as some, you know, R2, R3 kind of isometries at all. So, um, a great idea which might come to you here, um, a great insight, is that what we are trying to understand are not just like all collections of objects which have symmetries, but just the symmetries themselves. And so a group, slightly more kind of precisely, group is a set of symmetries. Okay. So what is a set in these examples? So um, let me maybe, um, in addition to all that, consider one more example. So one more example will be kind of a, a veil, maybe. So this is a veil, and it doesn't have any symmetries. I mean, at least in this sense. So, uh, of course, it's tempting to say, okay, this has no symmetries, this guy has one symmetry, this has five symmetries, and so on. But, but that's not what we are going to do, because it's actually convenient, and you will see why, to think that every object has a symmetry, mainly a transformation which does nothing to it. So, here, this group of symmetries will have just one element, and this will be called E. So, this is a symmetry which does nothing. So just just stay at rest. You know this this uh, whale is just staying as it is. Nothing happens. But if you look at these examples, all three actually. So there is this additional symmetry S, and this is again S. And here the symmetry is a set with two elements, E and S. And again E does nothing. S flips your butterfly. So here, uh, so there are actually, so in this triangle example, there are actually six symmetries. And uh, we will discuss this example uh, a little bit later in detail. There are three symmetries with respect to lines, and there are uh, two rotations, so five, plus the one which does nothing. And here and there, we have infinitely many. So, uh, 
why it's a good idea to look at symmetries instead of objects. Because then it's clear that in all these examples you are dealing with just the same group, which will have just two elements. And uh, it helps to build a mathematical theory without thinking at first of symmetries of what we are studying. We want just to classify the sets of symmetries. And then, of course, the main question is, what is special about sets of symmetries? What kind of sets are there? Do they have some additional uh, structure? And of course, at first you, you, you can say, okay, so at least the number of elements in the set is important, but then you can ask, okay, if you have two sets of symmetries of two objects with the same number of elements, is the pattern of symmetry the same? And the answer is no. We'll see different examples. So there should be something about the set of symmetries which make it into a group. And it's not a property because, I mean, there's not so many properties just a general set can have, but it's actually additional structure. And the structure is something we will uh, discuss uh, uh, next, but let me preliminarily explain uh, what, what is it. So if you look at any of these objects and look at any particular symmetry, there is this following interesting observation you can make. And the observation is, okay, if you have a symmetry and another symmetry, you can do their composition. You can do first one, then the other. So, for instance, here you can do this reflection and then do a reflection again. And this will be called multiplication of, of symmetries, and usually in reality it will correspond to composition of maps. In this example, for instance, you can do S twice. It will be called S squared and you get e back. So you do flip, you do another flip, and, and everything stays at, at rest. Um, and, and this property, like how you can make this composition in a group, is exactly what, what a group is. So a group is a set plus this additional operation of, of multiplying elements there, which has uh, certain properties. And these properties actually are just kind of those properties we expect from a general situation when your set is a set of symmetries of something. So um, my plan for this first class is as follows. So first we will discuss uh, a formal definition of a group. And we will discuss these axioms, the symmetry satisfy, and uh, in, look at this particular triangle example in great detail, sort of figuring out all the structure. Um, and after that, I will spend some time discussing these axioms in a little bit more detail, providing some additional properties and so on. Some of them are not obvious. And uh, then we will look at a few more examples, give a few more definitions. And finally, I will prove um, the first theorem about groups, which is an interesting theorem about any group with finite number of elements called Lagrange theorem. And eventually, um, we'll finish it up with uh, a bit of history and a plan for the remaining part of the course.